Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to Tech for Life. I'm Alex here and today we're going to be doing a bit of an overview on some parts that I got for a quadcopter build that I'm doing. It's a 220 millimeter build. I'm actually using the Martian 2 frame uh, from Banggood and so I just wanted to kind of give, like I said, a little bit of an overview on the parts and hopefully I can take this uh, as a bit of a series of videos maybe doing a step-by-step -step, uh, video build uh, sort of blog type of thing. Anyway, so let's just jump straight into the parts here. So I'll start off with the ESCs. I have the Racer Star MS Series 35 amp ESCs. You don't really need 35 amp ESCs. However, the 25 amp version of these ESCs, which is what I was going to go with, um, those were out of stock and they wouldn't have been in stock for another month or 15 days or something like that. So I decided to just bite the bullet and spend the extra maybe $7, uh, to go for the 35 amp version. Um, they won't get very hot, I'll say that, so that's a plus, but I spent an extra 7 or $10, so not a plus but either way they're here and I'm going to use them so all of these parts by the way I will link them in the description below um, so I'll have a bit of a parts list and I'll also put the total cost of all these parts this is entirely all the parts you need to make it fly this does not include the FPV system which I will incorporate later in these videos but uh, it does include a controller and I will show batteries later. So that's the ESCs. Now what I'm going to be using is um, these motors. These are the Racer Star uh, 2205-2300 kV motors. They're extremely cheap, but from what I've seen, they work incredibly well. So here's an actual close-up of the motor outside of the box. Um, they seem really smooth out of the package, so I hope they're smooth in flight as they are in my hand. But, you know, got to put them on the quadcopter to actually see. Um, so... I thought they were a really good deal. I got four of them in a pack, and I believe it was only, what, maybe $27. So that's a pretty good deal uh, with most other motors, good quality motors, mind you, that are somewhere around 10 to 15 bucks a piece. I'd say that's a really good deal. So those are the motors. I mean, they're 2300 kV, not the 2600 kV variant. So they're not going to be drawing that many amps. I really don't need those 35 amp ESCs, but I would have had to wait a lot longer if I wanted the 25 amp. And so it was just worth it for me to spend the extra 10 bucks. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going with the Martian 2 frame. We have it right here. Uh, so it's the 220 millimeter version, so I can only fit five inch props, but I really didn't want to go the six inch prop way, the five inch, a 5-inch frame is perfectly fine. Um, so in the package here, you'll see it comes with, obviously, your forearms, top and bottom plate, yada, yada. Um, foam things, foam leg things, yeah. Uh, all the stuff you need, uh, so that, I believe that's a fiberglass plate to put in between the um, PDB and the carbon fiber bottom plate. That's a good idea, because otherwise you're going to have some nice short circuits. Everybody loves those. Um, but, yeah, so that's uh, right there is the actual FPV camera holder. Um, it's a fixed angle holder, so it's good in the fact that it won't tilt during your flight, but it's bad in the fact that you can only select from three different angles. So, yeah. It comes with a little yellow X-T60, and you can use that, that's fine, but I say toss that out and go for something cooler like these black XT60s. 
I think that'll look much better. I don't like this giant yellow thing sticking off the back of my quadcopters, but, you know, if you like that yellow hunk of crap, then you go for it, okay? But these are um, black amass or amass, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure it's from China. Um, XT60s, but, you know, they're, they work and they look much nicer. So that's what I'm going with. Okay, so the rest of it here, obviously, we have the PDB. That's good. We have... These These look really nice, actually. I know they're purple, but even so, I'm not even a huge fan of that purple look, but damn, that looks really nice with that, like, rough texture and that purple, that dark purple. That actually looks really good, so, yeah. And then uh, the rest of the package you have, you know, all the screws, nuts, bolts, whatever... And this is really nice. It comes with standoffs for your flight controller. That's great because then you don't have to buy any standoffs for it. So that's really good. All right, so enough from that. Um, yeah, it's all the stuff right there. That's yeah, it's good. They just toss it over there. It won't break, I, I swear. Um, oh, we have this too. That, that's, that's good right there. Try not to stick my face in front of the camera. I'm sorry if it's uh, if you get scared if I do. I know my face is ugly. Don't don't worry. Um, so props here. I have Dal prop, Dal prop, D A L prop, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm using their 5045 Bullnose two blades. I got black and red. You know, got to got to have multicolored. Got to know what the front of your quadcopter is. Um, however. I also have bought the three blade variant for when I actually get somewhat good at flying because right now I suck but you know I'm, I'm getting better it takes practice you know it takes practice you can't just grab something and be like amazing at it I mean you can but that that takes some serious serious skill anyway so three blade variant uh, the T5045 the motors that I have should handle that fine um, and then let's move on over here. We got the flight controller. This is the SP Racing F3, but don't be confused by that name. It is a Chinese knockoff. This is the SP Racing F3 from Naze. So it's the Naze F3, I think. It, it's, it's quite confusing because the package, if you look, actually does say... SP Racing F3, but it's the Naze F3. So, yeah, I mean, it, there's the flight controller. You know, obviously it comes with all the, the pins. I got. It, I don't think this comes in a pre-soldered version. If it does, let me know. Um, but I have all the pins right there. I'm going to have to solder that. That's going to be a mess because I'm really bad at soldering. But, you know, I'll, I'll get better. Uh, it's got all your connectors. There's those little white connectors but you know I don't know what to call those but they're white plastic connectors that's what they are so that's what I'm gonna call them um, which I suppose is good because it'll look clean I guess but you know I also have so we, we have all the pins all those the wires um, and so that's that it comes with a little plastic case but I did not get the deluxe version or the 10 DOF version. Um, so I'm not really going to use that because the only reason I would see using that for is if you have a barometer and you don't want the wind to make your quadcopter go up and down. Uh, you can put some foam and the case on and then you'd probably be good. But this is a racing quadcopter, so don't spend the extra money because this is the same processor at a cheaper price. You don't need a barometer on a racing quad. Just saying. I'm not going to throw this one. That would be pretty bad. Um, I actually, even though it's not on the quad yet, I've already flashed that with Betaflight. It took me a while because I tried to fa uh, flash Clean Flight on it, but it didn't exactly work. I don't know why. Uh, yes, I installed all the drivers. 
yes, I did everything that the directions said. I looked it up online. I thought I was doing it right. I thought maybe I had a defective board. And then I said, well, let me try Betaflight. Betaflight worked. I have no idea why, because it, it, it doesn't make any sense. But Betaflight worked. Uh, I'll bet you now if I plugged it into CleanFlight, that would also work. I think the only thing I did differently was maybe reboot my computer. Maybe that was it the whole time, even though I had rebooted it before. Uh, but now it works fine. So, yeah. Uh, as far as the transmitter, we have the FlySky FSI 6. Um, I chose this because, well, I chose it. Uh, there's a ton of transmitters out there. You can go with whatever you like. This is a very budget-friendly option. And while I thought it was going to suck when I first heard of it and when I first was going to get it, I'm going to throw this box. That was, that was fun. I enjoy that. Um, so I thought it was really going to suck the first time that I was going to use it because I got it with a ready-to-fly quad. It was the Isheen Falcon 250. Um, I tried it, and I was actually blown away. For a beginner coming into the hobby, the FlySky FSI 6, the gimbals are fine, especially if you're coming from one of those toy grade quads with that crap ass gimbal in it. If you've flown with that and you're worried about getting the FlySky i6 because you think the gimbals are going to suck, don't. It's actually incredible. You will be surprised at how good they feel, especially compared to those toy grade quads. So don't be afraid and think, oh man, this is going to be bad, okay? It's actually pretty good. Now, I'm sure, and I've never used a Tyrannus, so I can't say, but I'm sure the Tyrannus probably has nicer gimbals. And I'm sure there are $700 transmitters that have nicer gimbals. But this is $43 at the time of this video. And it feels great. So, it also has a three-position switch. Great for modes, uh, flight modes. Um, I have my Falcon... 250 with the Isheen i6. It's basically an FS i6. Same thing, just with Isheen branded on it. Um, I have that set up to run in attitude, ratitude, and rate. That works great. So you can set it up like that. I also have one of the two position switches. I believe it's this one right here set up to uh, arm and disarm it, and this is the three position switch right here. So, yeah. The gimbals, they really do, they feel quite nice. Even though, you know, professional pilots who have used Tyrannuses and all that good stuff, they'll tell you they suck, but I think it's good. So, you know, if you've never used anything but a toy grade quad, you'll be blown away by how good they feel, so don't be afraid. If you've used a Tyrannus, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. Um, well, you should, because I want your views. No, that, that sounds really stingy. I don't know. Don't listen to that, but just don't buy the transmitter, I guess. <laughs> the rest of the build video should be fine. Anyway, so that's the transmitter I want to go with. Uh, that's the transmitter I would go with, because it feels great, and it works. And it's... Dirt cheap. Absolutely dirt cheap. So, yeah, that. Now, you can get this with... Let me get this right here. This, which is the um, the receiver that you can get it with, is the FSIA6B. Obviously, you can, you can see it. It should be on the screen, unless I'm really that bad. I mean, you know, I'm filming this with my phone, and it's strapped to a pipe. It's a great camera stand. You should try it. <laughs> but it's the FSA6B, and you can get it that comes with this, but I didn't because, once again, that was out of stock. So I just had to order that separately. What was it like? I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, and so I ordered that because it has PPM. I want to run PPM, I don't want to run PWM. 
My Falcon 250 has PWM, and it looks like crap. It's just a hunk of wires. It's very messy. It's hard to get at stuff, and it's just horrible. So, PPM, three wires, much easier, much nicer. Uh, hopefully, I can solder those on and make it look really clean. Probably won't happen because it's my first real build, but we'll see. Um, and then, I guess, finally, we can move over here to the battery straps. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to have these these nice banggood.com branded ones. And mostly that's just because they've got this kind of rubbery material on them. So I think it'll grip the battery nicely. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you'll be flying around. You'll be a nice big honking advertisement for Banggood, but they're two dollars and you get five of them, so sounds good to me. Um, so that kind of concludes this parts overview. Uh, if I talk too long or said um too many times, you can yell at me down in the comments. That's fine. I really don't care. Well, actually, I do care. I want your feedback, but I'm working on not saying um. Um, it's not working. So, yeah, I mean, you can yell at me for that in the comments. I'm trying to work on it. I know. My camera stand is rough. You can't see it, but it's rough. Uh, so if the video is shaky, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to try and work on it in the future. Please do leave me a comment down below telling me what I can do better, except for saying, oh, I swear, if someone says that, no, now someone's going to say that. Well, even so, I can't even see the screen of my phone, which I'm recording with right now. As you just saw it shake, that's because I hit a zip tie holding it up. My videos will get better. They can't possibly get any worse. This is Alex from Tech for Life, signing out. If I could, you know, hit the right button.